Hey guys, it's Jeremy here with another tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to create this A3 poster design. I did this poster design when I did an internship during my college degree. And you can see here, it was a pretty simple design, very typographic. And it had the motif of, you know, intersection of ideas and, and technology and stuff like that. So that's what the theme was about. And it was a collaboration with Semi-Permanent and SAE, which is the college I went to. And you can see there's a couple other assets like just some banners and um, some email stuff here that we had to design, which is pretty fun, pretty cool. And it was a good experience working um, with the manager and it was fun to do. So yeah, we're going to redo this and I'm just going to get rid of that. And we're just going to start off with an A3 layout. So you can just go to File, New. And usually if you go to Print at the top, it will have, and you click View Presets, it should have A3 there or the size, you just look up online and just create an artboard and then go find a color palette. You can go on color libraries, Adobe color, and you can find some colors there or just go online and, you know, use color hunt or colors.co to get, you know, a similar color palette with these blues. I'm going to press M for the rectangle tool and I'm going to drag out a box and I'm going to select this color here for the background. I'm going to lock the background and then start to build out this type. So it's very typographic and very simple. So to get the type, we're going to be using Monster Act because it's a free font. Um, as we go here, yep. Yeah. Because I know a lot of you guys have that. I'm going to click and we're going to start off with the title. Scale that up. I'm going to make that white. And I'm going to go to the type in the top left corner, change case. And we're going to go uppercase for that title. So go uppercase. Make that smaller. And it, we don't want it to be too big, but even though it's the um, top of the hierarchy, it's the primary you know, element. We don't want to make it too big. And then I'm just going to duplicate this and then scale that down. Go to the right and I'm going to line the ends up. Another cool trick I use is you make a box like this if you want to get it perfect. And I'll drag it over the end. And then you can see this, I'll drag it roughly like that. So I'll keep it lined up. So visually it looks nicer and balanced. And then we'll go, I'll design. And I'm gonna switch this. You can see we can move it like this, but what we wanna do is we can click the paragraph tool on the top right and do justify to right. So that means when we type, it will go, the typography starts from the right and goes to the left. So that's what we want. And I'm going to change that and make that uppercase again as well. And I can, whoops, I can realign the box again if I want. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's good. Might make this a little bit smaller. Sweet, it's looking good. Now I'm going to create the rest. I don't have all the information, so I'm just going to use placeholder type. So if you go to type, you go to fill with placeholder text. And so when you make a text box, you can see how it automatically does it, but in some versions, it may not do that. So you can just select the box, go to type, fill with placeholder text, and it's going to fill your text box with your type. Keep in mind that you have to click and drag when you press T for the text box tool, the type tool. That you got to click and drag to make a text box. But if you just click, it's just going to register it as one line. As you can see there, it functions differently. So I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to press Control Shift and the comma key to drop the size down. Probably go to 12. I'll select this, this sort of this grayish color, this dark gray, dark charcoal color there. I'll reselect the box and go to type fill the placeholder text just so it fills this all up. I'm going to go to the top and actually drop the weight down to regular because it was too thick. And that's kind of looking good. And I'm just going to maybe bump the tracking down. So I'm going to press hold alt or option, press the down arrow key. And that's going to create some space between the lines to make it easier to read because it may be a lot of text. And then I'm not going to align it to this side, but I'm going to align it to justify to the left. So it's aligning with this. 
And remember, we don't have to line everything up to the edges. We don't have to do that. Just visual, the visual weight has to, you know, line up. So cool, we have that. Now we're going to go into the next section. So you want to have a section for the your the speakers. Once again, I'll go to type at the top and change the case to uppercase. So I'm sort of going to line this up with the E here. Pretty handy. Smaller. Tears. Oops. Three tickets. I'm going to duplicate this type here. Make sure your smart guides are on. If you go to view and then go halfway down, you'll see smart guides. And this is going to help us keep things aligned. You'll see the purple line pop up. See that? How it snaps. Which is pretty cool. And we want to make this... I'll drop this size down a bit. That's pretty cool. And make sure that that's aligned together. Using the align tools at the top. When you select two objects together, you get the align tools at the top. And then you can center it horizontal or vertical with these two ones here. Super easy. Select those two together, align that. Drag these a bit. I'm going to select this one, press I for the eyedropper. And when you use this and select another type it's going to copy the same style and the size so you see that it copied the size of this one here and if you have a different line weight like a, a like a thick black I, I can select it and do the eyedropper and it's going to select the same weight which is pretty sweet and then i want to add some fill with placeholder text because i don't have all the type so I'm just, you know, doing it rough. I'm going to make it the same size as this. Use the eyedropper tool. And the paragraph, you can see it's justified to the left. Um, but I want to make sure that it's a box. So a speaker, usually when you have a speaker, they just have their title or what they're representing. I'm going to switch the just paragraph there. Let's make that shorter. S signal the little red boxes there. And I'll just copy this down here. Don't need that. You could probably put location if you wanted. Like this. I kind of like that, so I'm going to add that in. So we'll just say... You can see as I'm typing, just drag the box out so you can see where you're typing. 630... Start. Make sure you get all your punctuation correctly. And you see how it's too far. I want to make it closer so you can see that it's within the same group of text. 
just make sure it's readable. And then we've got the tickets down here. We can probably change the color because the tickets is important. We want to make sure that it's white. Delete those. Select it and you press backspace, really easy. And then we'll just go um, the three tickets available now. Email. And then we'll just go, let's see. Um, do a fake email, just making it up. And we might bump this up to medium. Actually, we'll leave it on regular. And we can probably even have it on two lines. Oh, we'll leave it on two lines instead of one line. So we have all that information. You can see it's the information is a bit too far. So we're going to bring it up. Bring it all up. Just like that. And then we can have the, the logos here. So we, we can pretend there's like a logo here. In the corner. And to get the pattern, a, a cool trick you could do is using the tilde key, which is next to your tab key and your number one key on the keyboard. And you would select a shape. So, you know, you can select a box or a star. I'll just go for a rectangle for now. And what you want to do is you want to click and drag and hold the tilde key at the same time. And you'll get this cool effect. And what I want to do is I want to switch the fill to a stroke. I'll change the color. And I'll make the stroke 0 0.5 points up in the corner. And you can see how you get this cool effect, like that. But you can also experiment with other shapes. So if I do a star or something, and hold it, holding the tilde key, you get this nice interweaving effect with these strokes. And you can play around with the thickness, but it's better to be really thin. And then what I'll do, I'll group all these together I would make a box. So you can see there's a box there. I'm going to select the box, select the group with the star, and I'm going to make a clipping mask. We can go to object, clipping mask, make, and it will cut off the excess there. So now we have this cool effect here. I can double click inside the box. You see there's a box here. I can double click so I can just move these around here. So instead of doing just the, the basic lines, we can add this. And then I'll duplicate this and flip it, the rotate tool. You put your mouse on the corner and you can just do that and shift it. And I'm going to line that up real quick. I don't know why there's a black stroke on that. And we get this cool effect. And then I'm going to bring it to the back. So I'll go object, arrange, bring, or center back or send backward, but center back. And we just want to bring it up one. So go object arrange bring forward one so it's behind the text so we've got this cool effect if you wanted to just to do basic strokes you can create a path or a stroke I'll duplicate it holding alt and shift to do it once and then press command or control D and it should automatically duplicate the lines and then from that I'll select the top bit and then holding shift and my right square keys, I'm going to bump it on an angle like this. And then just like the original, if I just drag out the stars, I can have this cool line effect like this. As you can see there. And we can line it up. You know, use your eyes, but you can see there. Optically, it looks pretty cool. This one doesn't have to line up exactly, but duplicate, duplicate it. And there we have it. We've got our poster design. Simple typographic, good use of space. We don't have the logos, but that's fine. You get the point. 
and really easy to do just using one font and just experimenting with color and the styles this should be that color and just using two colors and it can really stand out and look really good so it's simple effective and that's how you do a, a cool poster design thanks guys for watching subscribe for more content every week leave a comment below if this was helpful also let me know what type of tutorials you want to see because i'm here to help you and click that like button and we'll see you in the next tutorial